today on episode 39 of the Stoic Strength Trainer podcast. There is no risk when taking action. Anytime you take action, you get results. But you don't know what those results will be. And because of that uncertainty, you may hesitate, second guess yourself, or even completely put off taking any action at all. With training, however, you can become certain of the one thing that matters, your response to whatever unfolds. All right, welcome to the show. I appreciate you making the time to be here. This episode is one of those lessons that, if taken on board, will transform your ability to create the experiences and circumstances you prefer. Let's get to it. This is chapter 32 of the Jim Chiridion. Begin quote. The outcomes of our behavior are not up to us and must not deter the choice to act with excellence. Knowing the risk, we proceed with excellence regardless. In truth, there is no risk, for the outcome will be what it will, and we have the power to make it suit our purpose, which will be a good purpose if we so choose. When faced with a choice that involves some hazards, whether of bodily harm, loss of property, or damage to your reputation, remember that you already know the outcome, at least as far as your own character is concerned. You will be well. Whatever unfolds is indifferent to you. You have the power to make right use of whatever happens. If, having come to the conclusion that your choice to act is the excellent choice, you must act. As to what happens as a result, that is not up to you and indifferent to your purpose. Whatever unfolds will be material for your next choice and enable your further excellence of character. So act with confidence. Act with certainty. Reality is ever your friend and cannot let you down. End quote. In order to get yourself to the point at which you experience no risk when you are about to take action, there are a few things that you need to get sorted. The first is this idea that you can't control anything beyond your choice. And this is directly from the Stoic philosophy. In essence, you are the faculty of choice. This was called the pro racis by Epictetus and by other philosophers as well, but we'll just stick with the Stoics. And Epictetus considered that this faculty of choice, this faculty of volition, is, in essence, who we are. So we can make a choice. That is the control that we have. Beyond that, the results of our choices, that's out of our hands. As Epictetus tells us in the Enchiridion, the very first thing that he says is that some things are up to us and some things are not up to us. And the first thing that he references that is not up to us is our own body. We can choose to move a certain way, but how the body responds to that choice, that remains to be seen. With training, obviously, high-level athletes, they exhibit great influence over their own body. But age, illness, injury, all of these other elements will impact how much influence they have over their body. So that's the first thing. If you still cling to the idea that you can control anything beyond your choice, you're going to cause yourself all sorts of anguish. And then, as a, an obvious knock-on effect of that, you will experience risk because you're trying to control what is beyond your control. The second thing here is that I'm going to be referencing a simple model of the mind that I use 
that I call the choosing self and the conditioned self. I've gone into this model in episode 16 of this podcast. So if you want to get the details there, check that one out. But just as a quick recap, the choosing self is, as I just mentioned in the first point, is the proresis. It's the faculty of choice. So this is, in essence, who we are. And I call that the choosing self. We can make choices, and we can make any choice that we prefer to make. The other part of ourselves is what I call the conditioned self. And this is our habitual patterns of behavior. And some of these habits and patterns of behavior were not things that we chose. We just non-consciously absorb them from our parents, people who taught us in school, friends, and all of these wrapped up become our conditioned self. And when we are not consciously choosing as our choosing self, we are going to be expressing what is already part of the conditioned self. And this is going to make a little more sense if you haven't listened to episode 16 yet as I go through today's episode. And the third thing that I want to get clear here is that if you subscribe to being a stoic strength athlete, then your purpose is to operate with virtuous self-control in the moment of choice. And you do that in order to make the world a better place in two ways. One is through your actions, and two is by being a model of excellence worthy of emulation. Now, there's nothing that can stop you being consistent with that purpose, with that desire, and with that intention to operate with virtuous self-control or excellence in the moment of choice. If you choose to be consistent, you will be consistent. Not even Zeus himself, as the ancient Stoics would put it, can stop you. That doesn't mean that you can't be confused or make a mistake. It just means that in the moment of choice, that moment when you, remember that you as the choosing self, have asserted self-responsibility for your experience and you're aware of the standard of excellence that you hold for yourself, that's when you can make the choice to operate with excellence in that moment and nothing can stop you. You, the choosing self, can, however, be hijacked by your own physiology. A part of the brain called the amygdala may disable the frontal lobes. And that's where your executive function comes from, your ability to actually make conscious choices. And if the amygdala disables the frontal lobes, the fight-or-flight response takes over. The brain does this when something in the environment is interpreted as a threat to survival. Now, you're not able to think clearly and rationally your executive function is offline. In those moments, you are living as your conditioned self. Now your conditioning and your habits run the show. When the hijack ends, you come to, so to speak, and you're left to deal with the circumstances. You're still responsible for what your conditioned self has done, you can't just uh, write it off as, that wasn't my choice, it was my conditioned self. I got hijacked by my amygdala. You, you can't say that. So if your conditioned self made a mess of things, like perhaps you became angry and you lashed out at somebody and damaged the relationship in that way, well, now you have a choice to make. You can't have done anything else. You can now, however, choose to do 
something different, something better. By training your mind, you are creating a conditioned self that will do what you prefer without your conscious attention required. This is what training is. You're training your mind. You're looking at the options available in certain circumstances and you're deciding if this happens, then this is what I want to do. So it's very similar to computer programming. It's an if-then algorithm or a when-then algorithm. When you do this type of training, you have left yourself the bandwidth to make those conscious choices to tweak the system that you call your life. You'll be able to pay attention to those moments in which the system isn't up to the task of living with excellence, that system being the conditioned self. So when you do exercise that conscious thinking and that executive functioning, you'll ask yourself the necessary questions to improve the system of the conditioned self so you can trust that system to respond with excellence in the circumstances in which you are not paying attention. Okay, so how does all this relate to there being no risk when you take action? When you're trying to avoid risk, what you're wanting is certainty of outcome. Certainty of outcome is impossible. You'll always do your best to influence the circumstances and the environment to create the outcome that you prefer. But will you achieve that? Will you create that circumstance or that environment for sure? No. You can't, you can't know that that's going to happen. You're going to do your best, but you can't be certain of that. So when there is uncertainty, it's experienced as risk. If you want certainty, there's only one place to get it, and that is from yourself. The circumstances in which you find yourself and which you are trying to change can provide nothing but uncertainty because they're beyond your control. If you're trying to get your certainty from the circumstances, you can only ever fail in the long run. You'll influence the circumstances, but influence is not control. The only control is self-control, the ability to choose. The only certainty you will ever be able to create for yourself is choosing in favor of the experiences and the circumstances you prefer to live. If you need to manipulate the externals into a specific arrangement in order to experience the happiness you want or the peace of mind or the level of health or the physique that you want or the strength or whatever it is that you want to experience, good luck with that. But that is not simply a matter of choice. Fate permitting you'll get what you want. But if you don't get what you want, what then? Now, being dependent on the circumstances as you are for your experience, you're trapped. Instead, what I'm suggesting is that you get your certainty from making the excellent choice, doing the very best that you can, being indifferent to the outcome even though you have a preference, you would like things to turn out a certain way. That would be great. However, you can't control that. The only thing you can be certain of if you train yourself well is how you will respond. So regardless of the outcome, you can use that as material. So there is no risk as far as your character is concerned as far as your certainty in and confidence in your ability to use whatever happens. When you train your mind well to think 
clearly to make the excellent choice in the moment, regardless of what's happened, then you can be certain that you can handle whatever happens. Then you don't desperately need things to turn out a certain way, and the risk of the choices that you are making disappear. That brings us to the end of another episode of the Stoic Strength Trainer podcast. Thanks for tuning in. If you like what you heard, please do share it with someone that you believe might like it too. This is Corey. If even just one more person learns to operate with virtuous self-control in the moment of choice, the world has become a better place.